guys, welcome back. Today I am going to do Sturgis Talk Destinations. I was going to do just a two part series with Sturgis Talk, but there is so much to cover. I didn't want to spend so much time talking your head off um, and boring you. So I decided I was going to break it up in segments instead of just doing two parts. So this one I am going to call Sturgis Talk Destinations. So let's get started. On my last video on Sturgis Talk Part 1, we talked about a lot of the locations there in that are popular there in Sturgis. Um, but a couple more um, locations I would like to highlight, of course, is Sturgis Harley-Davidson and the Ind Indian Motorcycle Dealership. And on Main Street is the um, Sturgis Motorcycle Hall of Fame Museum. Um, that's another thing that you should really go check it, check it out. It is really cool. So um, with that, let's move on out of Sturgis. And speaking of Harley Davidson, you, can, you have to make sure you go visit the Black Hills Harley Davidson out in Rapid City. They have thousands of new and used motorcycles um, during the rally. And they actually led the world in Harley sales last year in 2021. No Harley Davidson dealership in history has produced the revenue that Black Hills Harley Davidson has achieved just last year. Um, it's definitely a destination in its own right. So make sure to go out there and check it out. Um, they have lots of vendors out in their parking lot along with food vendors. Uh, so make sure to go do some shopping at the vendor sites there at the Black Hills Harley Davidson. And right across the street um, is also a, another parking lot that's full of vendors as well. Now, when you come into the Black Hills Harley Davidson's main entrance, um, get ready to strike that pose because when you go around the corner um, behind the vendors to the, where they're directing you to go park, there is going to be one of those roadside photographers um, getting ready to snap your picture. Um, I do believe last year there was a gentleman there that was handing out tickets with your number. Not sure um, if that'll happen again this year or how it'll go down, but every year there is a photographer there um, getting ready to take your picture. So watch for that. And once you get parked and get in there, make sure you also go inside the dealership. I believe personally they have one of the largest Harley apparel inventories at any Harley Davidson. Uh, so if you can't find it at your local and you're heading out to Sturgis, chances are you're going to probably find it there. Uh, then if you want to take a little ride and head about 75 miles east of Sturgis, that'll take you to the Badlands of South Dakota. It is such beautiful scenery um, out at the Badlands. I like to call it the Baby Grand Canyon because uh, it's very similar uh, to how the Grand Canyon looks, just <laughs> a lot smaller. So uh, if you haven't been there to check that out, make sure you get out there and check that out. And then just north on the north edge roadside of the Badlands is the famous Wall Drug. It is just a little bit off of the exit off of I-90, a little bit north off the exit. Uh, it's pretty cool that it has some shops and um, if you're in need of cowboy boots, that's probably the place you're gonna find some because I don't think I have ever seen so many cowboy boots in one place. They have tons out in Wall Drug. So if you're needing cowboy boots, you're gonna find them there. Now, going into the hills, the closest destination is going to be Deadwood, which is home of the famous shooting and killing of 
Wild Bill Hickok at Saloon Number 10. Uh, so go make sure to check it out. They even have a little tour um, down in the original Saloon Number 10 to where you can take a little tour into um, a little museum thing that they have downstairs for Wild Bill Hickok. Uh, there's also several casinos and restaurants in Deadwood as well. For fine dining, we like to eat at the Gem Steakhouse, which is on the second level of the Mineral Palace, which is on Main Street. And for casual dining, a good place to eat is Mustang Sally's. They are located off of Main Street as well. And they do have a um, patio outside by the street um, for patio dining. And they are actually one of the only ones in Deadwood who actually have patio dining. There is another one just up the street a little bit there on Main Street that has some outside dining, but it's not near the street. It's kind of inside of a corral. And um, last year, that you could not go in and sit in that area um, to have drinks. The only way you were able to sit there was if you were going to eat. Um, so that was kind of a bummer that they had done that. So that kind of takes away from some additional outside seating. But anyways, you have Mustang Sally's and they do have some really good food. Now, also, I am a history buff. I love history and I'm telling you our hills are full of history. Um, but one of my favorite things to do is to go to old cemeteries. Well, Deadwood has one of the best cemeteries ever. Um, it is up on a hill, so it is kind of a walk, just so you are aware of that. And it is the site of where Calamity Jane and Wild Bill Hickok are buried. They are buried right next to each other. So uh, it is well worth the hike. Um, just make sure you have comfortable shoes and take your camera because you're going to want to snap some pictures while you're there. It, it, it really is a cool cemetery. So make sure to check all that out. Then next, which is right connected with Deadwood, is Lead, South Dakota. Lead is a old historical mining town. Very small. You blink, you're going to go through it. Um, but just two miles outside of Lead is the Boar's Nest Roadhouse. Um, it is a very another very popular stop for riders. So if you're thirsty and quenched and need to get hydrated, take a stop at the Boar's Nest and check it out. Okay, then after lead, then it's off to Hill City where you can literally go back in time on the 1880s train. You can take it to Keystone and get off or you can do a round trip and come back to Hill City. You can also pick up the train in Keystone as well and ride it up to Hill City. So either way, you can take it one way or you can do a round trip and get a feel of what it was like in the 1880s. It's really cool. I'm not sure what the cost is, but I think it's, it would be well worth the experience. So make sure to check out the 1880s train when you're in Hill City. Also in Hill City, um, one of the best places to go eat is called the Alpine Inn. It is also on Main Street. Uh, it has wonderful dinners. They get pretty busy, so make sure you get there to get your name in. Um, and I do believe they have one of the best prices around for their, for their dinners. So make sure to check out the Alpine Inn on Main Street. Then next, we're off to Keystone. Keystone is another really cool small town. Um, that one's full of shops and they have a really good little ice cream parlor there as well. And it's also where you're gonna find Mount Rushmore. So make sure you go check out those famous, famous faces while you're out in Keystone. 
Then after Keystone, um, about 30 miles south is Custer State Park. That's where you can see all the roaming buffalo. Please, please do not approach the buffalo. Stay on your bike. And if they get frightened or startled, they will hurt you and they will charge. So please don't, don't go near the buffalo. Just, just go check them out. Just stay away from them. Don't, don't harass them. Don't scare them. Uh, Cause again, they will scare, they will attack you. So please just stay, stay at a distance. Uh, then just outside of Custer is the Crazy Horse Monument. And what that is, is it, um, it's up on the rock like Mount Rushmore and it hasn't been finished. It, it's still halfway done. It's been halfway done for like the last 20 years. It's really cool, but I, I can't imagine what it'll look like when it's completed. It would be phenomenal. Don't know if it'll ever get done, um, but it's still really cool to go check it out. Um, so then after Custer, a couple more must sees up in the hills are Needles Highway, which is a pretty tricky, which can be pretty tricky at times because it has, um, with its tunnels and the one lane highway and the windy roads, it, it, it can be pretty tricky. So then you have Iron Mountain Road, which is 17 miles of some of the most challenging, challenging motorcycle riding in the country. That's what they say. I, I'm just repeating what I what I read up on. They have um, it has 314 curves, 14 switchbacks, three pigtails, and three tunnels. It's a very beautiful ride, but I'm going to say. If you are a new rider or a beginner rider, please, please be very, very safe and careful if you plan on going on these roads. It is very treacherous at times and can be dangerous. So please just be careful if you choose to take the ride. Take it slow. Don't worry about the riders behind you. Just arrive alive okay on 385 south of deadwood there is also some more vendors the, uh, a nice vendor section uh, with a convenience store and a gas station right there as well and then if you go up the road just a little bit and on your other side is called trino's leathers um he he is someone who makes his own stuff most of his stuff he makes handmade uh, we go there every year and that's where we purchase our seat fur our leather straps and any custom leather work that we need to have done um, he he is a wonderful sweet guy and he will take really good care of you um, and like i said i just i love supporting the locals it, I, I, I think I think it's very important. So we do what we can to support the local businesses while we're out there during the rally. Then next you have Spearfish Canyon, which is probably about 20 miles west of Sturgis. And I have to say, it is probably some of the most breathtaking motorcycle riding I have ever seen. Check out my spearfish video um, and you will know what I'm talking about. It is just, it's gorgeous, very serene. Um, then as you go up the canyon, there is what is, it is called Spearfish Canyon Lodge. Um, there you're gonna find several more vendors, a beer tent, and there is also a bar inside the lodge as well. And out there is a, photog a professional photographer. He has the Spearfish Canyon background 
and you can take a photo with you and your bike. And these photos are just absolutely gorgeous. That also is on my Spearfish Canyon video. So make sure to check it out if that's something you're interested in because I do scope right up to it um, with my camera uh, when I was there last year. So make sure to check it out if that's something you're interested in. Um, but me saying that about the photographer just reminded me when you're coming up Spearfish Canyon, there is gonna be one of those roadside photographers getting ready to take your picture. So watch along the side of the road and you're gonna see signs saying up ahead, up ahead. So make sure to be ready to strike that pose um, for your picture. And when you see it, make sure to timestamp it in your head um, because that's the only way you're gonna find it online is um, with what time and what day you went up that canyon. Okay, very important to remember the time and day. All right, so now going the other direction out west, we are going now to Devil's Tower, Wyoming, which is also another um, big destination for the bikers. It is about an hour and a half west on I-90 out of Sturgis. Then from there, um, you have on Tuesday of the rally, um, Alzada, Montana, better known as Topless Tuesday. That happens on the Tuesday of the rally and it gets extremely packed. So if you want to go, make sure you get your fanny up early and you get out there because, um, you're not going to be able to get in the building to see the girls if you don't get there at a decent time. Uh, the contest usually takes place about 2 o'clock, um, but I'm you want to get there early because, uh, again, it gets extremely packed. Two years ago, it got so packed in 2020 that they ran out of beer, literally, before the contest even started. So they are pretty much out of beer. Um so again, that's on Tuesday of the rally. So next we have Hewlett, Wyoming, which is about an hour and 15 minutes out of Sturgis. Here they, they have what is called the Ham and Jam Festival. They have it every year on the Wednesday of the rally. The city provides free lunch while it lasts to the motorcycle community. I mean, that is just such a sweet thing to welcome us into their town and, and give us free food. That is just awesome. Um, and there is also lots of vendors out there and there are a couple bars as well. The sheriff of the town, he'll ride around horseback and visit with all of us bikers while he's sitting on his horse. He is such an awesome sheriff and you'll get a kick out of him. So if you go to Hewlett, make sure to stop and tell him hi. Um, he, he just loves when the rally comes around. So make, make sure to show your appreciation. Then you have Stonehouse Saloon, a bar all by itself out in a field. It is located just outside of Bella Fouche, it's a cool destination with outdoor entertainment. And the house, it's, it has a little house, and inside you can go in and um, put your signature in there and sign it and uh, show that you were there. So that's kind of cool to be able to do too. So make sure to check out the Stone House Saloon as well when you're out in that vicinity out by uh Stoneville Saloon because they're I think they're pretty close to each other. So make sure to check out Stonehouse Saloon as well. Um, again, all of these locations I've mentioned are major rally destinations. There are just way too many destinations for me to mention in this video. What I recommend is pick up a Black Hills map 
when you get here or you can also go online uh, to SouthDakotaWriters.com and that's all spelled out SouthDakotaWriters.com and you can print and download the Black Hills map for free there as well you know and it'll just help you plan for your rides for when you get to the rally you'll already be prepared and know where you want to go um, so that's an option for you too one more newer destination that I want to mention is Wyatt's Lemonade Stand. Um, he is off of exit I, excuse me, he is off of I-90, exit 40, Tilford Road. Um, he's just east of Sturgis. You can learn more about Wyatt's story on my previous video, Wyatt's Lemonade Stand. Please check it out if you want a little more information on this sweet little boy. Like I've said before, I am very passionate about supporting Sturgis locals. If there are any Sturgis locals that would like their goods or services highlighted in, in, in one of my videos, please reach out to me. I would love to help. Okay, guys, again, make sure to stay tuned. I have many more videos and updates coming your way. So if you have not subscribed, please subscribe. And if you have not hit that notification button, please hit that notification button now. That way you are notified of any of my upcoming videos or updates. Um, so I really hope you liked the video. If so, please give me a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed, make sure to subscribe. And as always, I hope you have a very beautiful and blessed day. Talk to you soon and ride safe.